Here we are, gathered for worship again, and what a joy and a delight it is to be here. I'm happy that you're here as well. And whether you are at home, at work watching this, or whether you're in a sanctuary with others or your own private sanctuary, we gather and worship this day to celebrate the presence of God, to give thanks for the blessings we have received, and remind ourselves to be thankful and generous people. As we gather in this worship this day, may the presence of God be among us. So come, worship with me. Our scripture reading today is the first 11 verses from the 26th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. These are the words of instruction that Moses offered to the people of Israel on how to give thanks to God. May these words guide and inspire us in our observation of thanksgiving. Moses said to the people, When you have come into the land that God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that will be designated as a dwelling place of God. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say, Today I declare to God that I have come into the land that was sworn to our ancestors. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar, you shall make this response before God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the God of our ancestors. God heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. Then God brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And God brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O God, have given me. You shall set down the basket with your offering before God and bow down. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that thee, your God, has given you and to your house." Holy Wisdom, Holy Word, thanks be to God. Welcome to these wonderful autumn days. Aren't these beautiful? Don't they just remind us of, of the joy and the warmth of creation when we can gather in a place and in a time like this? I love these autumn days. I don't love them because I know that winter is coming next, but I love them for the days that they are right now. The transition from the warmth of summer to the coolness of autumn days and the, the transition of creation and the trees turning from their leaves of green to those multicolored splendors of autumn. What a joy it is. I never recognized how much that I missed the autumn colors until I moved to Saskatchewan in 2000. And I was there for five autumns. In Saskatchewan, we didn't have the abundance of colors. There was lots of yellows. And then I came back to New Brunswick one autumn and I was reminded of the beauty of this autumn season and the transition that creation takes in our midst and sometimes a gradual transmission of color. It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's invigorating. But I'm mindful of my days that I spent in Saskatchewan those five autumns and some of the traditions that they had within the seasons out there to, to mark the autumn season was that most of the small prairie communities would host what we call was a fowl supper. And that's uh, fowl as in a, a chicken or a duck or turkey, uh, not as in fowl as in bad. And I remember one season when one of the communities that we were serving and I served in the midst of was getting preparing for their, their fowl supper, and they decided that that year they're going to make a change, do something different. And it was in the year that there was a, a turmoil in the beef industry, 
And so they decided that they weren't going to offer turkey like every other prairie community was. They were going to offer a roast beef supper. And I remember when we were preparing for that, uh, one person told me a story that I've never forgotten. And it was about a young man that he was uh, preparing a roast beef at home. And before he put it in the oven, he cut off the ends of the roast. And his partner said, why do you cut off the ends? He said, well, my mother always cut off the ends before she put the roast into the oven. And, well, why did she do that? And the man said, I don't know. So a little bit later that weekend, they were going to his parents for Thanksgiving dinner. And so when he got there, he said, Mom, he said, when you used to cook a roast, you used to cut off the ends. Why did you do that? And she said, well, my mother always did. Well, why did she do it? I don't know. A little later in the meal, Granny came to supper. And so the mother and the son both said, when you cooked a roast, you always cut off the ends. Why did you do that? She said, oh, it was simple. She said, my roast pan was too small. Sometimes we do things that we don't really know the history or the story of. As we are in the midst of this season of Thanksgiving and this Thanksgiving weekend, we are to be mindful of the stories of Thanksgiving that bind us together with the generations of faith that have preceded us about how to give thanks to God for the blessings that we have received. The story we just heard from the book of Deuteronomy was uh, the words from Moses to the people of Israel. And he was inspiring them to be mindful of the blessings that God has given to them. That God was with them in their times of turmoil and slavery in Egypt. God was with them on that journey into freedom. God was with them when they arrived in the land that was flowing with, as we call it, milk and honey. And that as they settled into that new land, tilled the soil, planted the seeds, and harvested the crops, God was with them. And Moses inspired them to be thankful and to remind themselves that all that they have was due to the presence of God, that God blessed them. And an appropriate response to those blessings that were received was to come to the temple to bring a basket that contained the first fruits of your labor from the land upon which you were living and offer them to God as a gift of gratitude and thanks. And that's the story as people of faith is our story of thanksgiving. Reminding us that the story is for us to, to give our thanks to God, to gather together the blessings that we have received, to bring them towards God in a sense of, of giving thanks for the basket that we're holding, the basket that contains our blessings, the blessings of family, of friends, of community, the blessings that we enjoy within this country, the blessings of our time and our talents and our treasures, the blessings of having something to share, to share not only with God, but to share with others through the ministry that we offer. I like to expand this day of Thanksgiving to become a season of Thanksgiving, to remind ourselves that we just don't pause on this one day to give thanks, but we're encouraged to find the multitude of ways to give thanks to God every day. Like this day that we're enjoying as we record this service is a beautiful autumn day. There's warmth, there's sunshine, and we give thanks for that. We give thanks that we can, we can go into our gardens or we can go to our markets or we can go to our stores and, and find those foods that, that we can enjoy to, to prepare a feast. Maybe it's just a feast for one or two of us or a feast to share with our friends. We are in a beautiful country as well. And we've just come through a time of, of hurricane and disaster in some parts of our problem, province. And so we need to be mindful of how we can be a blessing to others. How that what we didn't endure here, but was endured by others through the Hurricane Fiona, is something that we can do to reach out and connect with them. How can we help them? How can we share our blessings? How can we express our thanks to God through what we do for others? So not only on this Thanksgiving Sunday are we called and inspired to be thankful and filled with a thankful and generous heart, but in this season of Thanksgiving, 
we are to be mindful of the ways in which we can bring our offerings. Our offerings to say thanks to God and our offerings as gifts to others. And it's important to tell the story of our thankfulness, of the blessings we have received. It's important to tell the thanksgiving story of our faith, to remind us that as people of faith, we're continually reminded to tell the stories of how God has blessed us, how our faith has inspired us, how our devotion as the disciples of Jesus in the world and in this place continues to, to bring light and hope to others. What is your story of thanksgiving? What are you thankful for? What are you bringing as an offering to God to say thank you for the blessings that I've received? Thank you, God, for all that you've given to us. How can I be an expression of thanksgiving to others? As the beauty of creation surrounds you in these autumn days, may you continually be reminded of how thankful you are, blessed you are, and a blessing you are to others. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Whether we are together with others in a place of worship or united with others in spirit as part of our wider community of faith connected in our virtual and online world, I invite you to join your heart with mine in prayer. Amazing God, we thank you for all the little ways you speak to us. We thank you for all small, humble creatures who fulfill their place in the world and reveal the wonder and mystery of creation in their tiny beings. We thank you for small gestures of courtesy and kindness for people who hold open doors and let us into traffic or simply smile at us on the street. We thank you for sparrow songs and dandelions, for scurrying squirrels preparing for winter, for fall asters and fluttering leaves of vibrant autumn splendor, and for all common things that reveal your beauty as much as the great and spectacular ones. As we continue to reflect on how our ancestors of faith were guided on how to give thanks for the blessings of their lives, may we be inspired to name our blessings, count them one by one, and with every breath, meditate on the abundance surrounding us and the many blessings that fill our hearts and lives each day, a constant reminder of your generosity to us and the inspiration for us to be generous to others in our family, community, and the whole of your creation. Our basket of offering is truly filled to the brim and overflowing. Thank you. In the midst of our bounty, blessings, and abundance, we hold in our hearts with prayerful love many who are struggling to identify their blessings and challenge to fill their baskets with thanksgiving offerings. We take a moment in silence and offer our heart-held prayers for those struggling, those grieving, those journeying through a time of loss, financial difficulties, and living through the traumas of war, natural disaster, and illness. Receive, God of compassionate listening, the prayers we offer for others and for our own selves. As a community of faith that cares for others with our expressions of genuine love, we bring our gratitude of thankfulness and offer them into your tender heart along with our prayers and open our hearts to the guidance of your spirit as we live out our faith each day as the followers of Jesus. All that we've offered in words and in our silence, we commend into your loving care, O God, the creator of our abundance. 
our source of blessing, our loving parent, our nurturing mother, our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. What a beautiful place to rejuvenate your body, your mind, and your spirit. It is for me to be surrounded by the wonders of creation in this autumn season, by fruits of field and harvest, the fruits of the spirit, the blessings of God. What are the blessings that we have to share? The blessings of time, the blessings of our talents, or perhaps even the blessing of our treasures. God inspires us and blesses us in a multitude of ways and calls us to respond with a generous and a thankful heart. Our time of worship is over. Now it's time for us to go out into God's world and be the people of God, to be the disciples of Jesus, the spirit blessed and gifted people. May we move into this week to discover the blessings that God has offered to us and how we're called to be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen.